who created the heart. We didn't forget about who created this body. We forget about it. And God says, wait a minute. You want to get things right? Ask me. Created me a clean heart. What are you going to ask me for? Well, I'm, 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 I'm changing my heart. I'm, I'm just praying that my heart get right. You know, God said, ask me created me a clean heart. He didn't say, watch this now. Watch this. He didn't say another heart. He says, create me a clean heart. In other words, God, I need you to clean up the one I got. That's right, that's right. Amen. Amen. See, see, if God can't fix what's inside of you, how is he going to fix what's outside of you? Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? God's got to be able to fix inside of you. First is, he says, with the renewing, he didn't say he's going to take your mind and put another one there. He said, no, I'm going to take the one you got and I'm going to renew on. it that Come it will on. not be conformed to what it used to see, but will be transformed. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. But with the same mind, I'm going to clean it up so you can see me. See, we're looking for new body parts. And they ain't coming. Can I get a witness, amen? Amen. We're looking for amen. new body parts and they ain't coming. That's right. They're not coming. That's right. God has not made a mistake with what he has given you. Amen. Right. What he said to you is I need to renew that mind that you got to follow after me. I need to create you a new heart to follow after me. Amen. Well, God, amen, then you need to, you need to just go ahead and change this body that I made a mistake with you. Mm. And I said That's it's finished. Right. I'm going to work with what I finished. Come on. I'm not going to go find something else. I'm going to work with what I have finished. That's right. Yeah. And we're looking forward. We'll try to try to figure this out. Lord, uh, give me a new mind. Amen. If you wake up, to, if you wake up with your mind on the side of your pillow, you'll lose your mind. Come on. Come on. Give me a new heart. You wake up the next morning, your heart's sitting on the side of, side of you, man. You, you won't know what to do. So won't we just start letting God work on inside of us? Right. Amen. To help us get to the next level. I'm just teaching now, amen. I'm just teaching. And God, 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 just help me, amen. Why? Why? Because it says in, in, in 5110, amen, it said, create me a clean heart, O Lord. And now watch this, watch this now. He says, uh, he wants us to create a, a new heart, O Lord. And he says, and renew. Watch this. A right spirit mm -hmm. within me. Mm -hmm. To what? Renew a what? Right, right. right spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus told them when they go back out, when they had came back from fishing, amen, he, he says, he says, now go back out and cast those nets on the right side. When are we going to get right with God? And when we get right with God, amen, we'll stop going through the things that we go through. We'll realize that God's in charge, amen. God can renew my mind, God can create me a clean heart, and God can order my footsteps. That's good. For me to know what he's telling me and what he has assigned to me over all of this, amen. I'm sitting here and I'm struggling and I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out why I keep going through these struggles. God says, I want to renew your mind. I want to create, watch this, a clean heart and right spirit. He didn't say, hey, spirit. He said, no, the right spirit. The right spirit. The one that you're going to, see, the right spirit makes you fall out to Christ. Which influence you're going to be under? It's the right spirit. And why when we look at it, it's only one spirit. Right. So why would God say to renew a right spirit uh -huh. mm -hmm. when there's only one spirit? Because uh -huh. we love picking up a spirit. And it's not the agape spirit, which is the love of God. Amen. Anytime something pulls you away from love, amen, that is not of God. Amen. <laughs>
So if you decide to deal with it and you know that's not of God, amen, then you have to remember that's not of what? It's not of God. Amen? Uh, uh, hold this for me, Stu. How many of us have had folks talk about us? <laughs> They're going to talk about you next week. In the week after that. In the week after that. In the week after that. And matter of fact, we get mad. We get mad when folks talk about us, but we talk about, oh, that's his family when they talk about us. What's the difference? What's the difference? Is there any difference? If it's all, it should all be in accordance to what? God's word. Let me tell you, some of the hardest things to follow is family members. Who got the best opinion about your worst condition. And they want you to know about it. Guess what? Y'all know what? Always have to pray. Can I help y'all with something? Y'all need to get ready. Because I'm asking God to send the crackheads. I'm asking God to send the broken body. I'm asking God to send the prostitutes. I'm asking God to send the drunks. I'm asking God to send the fornication. I'm asking God to send the lesbians and the gays and everybody. I'm asking God because I know he can create a new heart in him. I'm not going to be subject to a perfect church when there is not a perfect church. What is perfect is when you try out the Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. That is what is perfect. But until then, I'm going all the way with whatever God says. We got to get ready, amen. We get to pass us in our life, amen, to where we can't go back down to where we used to be because I don't want nobody to, to, to remember me when I was down there. Guess what, amen. When you get into the shadow of the valley of death, amen, amen, you'll feel no evil. Why? Because God is with you. Amen. So why can't you go back to the valley? Right, why can't you go back to the streets? Amen. Why can't you go... I want to be a perfect Christian, but ain't nobody getting saved. You want everybody to know you're sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, amen, but you can't get the altar call. You go to put your hand up the lay on the drunk, the drunk take off running. Y'all got to come on and help me, amen. I know some of y'all may not receive this, but the point is, which influence you're going to be under? Because if you get under the Holy Spirit, amen, God will change your mind, he will change your heart. How, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked that question. Well, Pastor, you, you said all these great things and you tell me what God would do, amen. And then, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, how? How is this going to happen? Let's go to Isaiah 1. How's it going to happen, Pastor? How? Oh, I, I, wait a minute, I'm this, this, this sounds pretty good to me, Pastor. But how's it going to happen? It says, Isaiah mm, 16 and 1, it says, this. no, excuse me. Isaiah 1 and 16, it says, he's going to wash you, he's going to make you clean, and then here he goes. He's going to put away the evil of your doing. Yes. Did y'all get that? God says, I'm going to wash you, I'm going to make you clean. And I'm going to put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes and cease. I want you to cease from it. God said, I'm going to put it up. I'm going to wash you. I'm going to clean you. Then I'm, I, I'm, I, I, I need y'all to hear this now. Now God said, I'm going to wash you. I'm going to clean you. And then I'm going to put it up. So the only way it can come back is if you go get it. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying, amen? God says, oh, put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. God says, I'm, I'm, after I wash you and clean you, I'm going to put away all that stuff. In other words, I don't even want to know nothing else about your past. Can I get a witness amen? God don't talk about our past. People do. And we keep going to the same people that keep talking about our same old past. Well, maybe they're talking about the past because you're still living it. And you're still carrying it. Well, God says, wait a minute, I'm going to wash you, I'm going to make you clean. I'm going to clean your heart. I'm going to renew your mind. I'm going to renew the right spirit. I'm going to put away evil of your doings. I'm going to put it away. Before my eyes. Now you got to cease from 
doing evil. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do it. And he says, now, if you do those things, drop down to 19, Isaiah 1 and 19. He says, now, if you be willing, can I get tap your neighbor and say, if you be willing? Ah, ah, I hear what I'm saying, amen? He says, if you be willing, he says, ye shall eat. Are oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? God, God is showing us. He says, he says, he says, he, he says, you shall eat. Amen? The good of the land. Why? Because in 17, he said, I want you to learn to what? Do well. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Now somebody help me, amen? God said, I want you to learn to what? Do well. But what, what, what God is not able to do those things? Well, maybe those things ain't for you. Maybe if you ask me what's assigned to you, you won't struggle with trying to get things that's not assigned to you. Can I get a witness, amen? We, we got to move God from the genie in the bottle and the, the rubbing and all the tugging and the pulling. Lord, if it be your will, can I get that car? If it be your will, can I get that house? God says, wait a minute, you talking to me about things. What about, where's our place at? What's the position? What's the assignment? What's the relationship? What's the fellowship? See, we got to understand, we're, we're trying to figure out the Bible. Why did God, why did God speak that when it was questions? Or why did Jesus talk in parables? Amen. Because this assignment was not to give you the answer to what you was looking for. But to point you to who could provide, who could supply all your needs. And that's why I got to get you to see me before you see things from me. Can I, can I get a witness, amen? amen. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, learn to do well, learn to do well. by putting up evil things. <laughs> Woo Don't y'all know if, if you just tell your neighbor, say, if you just stop that evil stuff. No, 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 no. Abe, you're supposed to talk the other way. Amen. Talk the other way. Amen. You say talk to the baby. No, no, no. I said, Abe, 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 don't let him talk, talk to you like that. Amen. Amen. Show your anointing evangelist. Amen. Show the hand. Show the hand. Amen. Don't make me put. Amen. But watch this. I want y'all. Everybody lift your hands just for a second. I'm decreeing the glory that everything that's evil that keeps attaching itself to you. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. I come against it and bring you into your full restoration. That God says that he will clean you. Amen. He will put the right spirit in you. You will learn to do well. And you will eat the good of the land. Everything that you need, I prophesize over you right now. Everything that you need, God shall supply your need. If you will just learn to do well and stay away from evil. And someone's got to say, that's got to be my mouth. Mm -hmm. Got to start with my mouth. Pastor, you don't talk about my mind. You don't talk about my heart. You don't talk about the spirit. But you ain't saying nothing about my mouth. Because your mouth has the opportunity to bless you or curse you. You decide on how you use your mouth. Can I get a witness? Amen. You, it's your mouth. You control your mouth. You control the power of the tongue that's in your mouth. It's yours. It's yours. Can I get a witness, amen? amen. And so when I see this, amen, if y'all could bring me the water, amen, for a second, amen, I just want to give a demonstration here, amen, as we get ready to close, amen. The Bible says, uh, uh, it, it tells us that, and now in John 15 and 3, it says, it, it tells us, it says, now you are clean through what? What cleans you? Through the word which I have what? Spoken to you. If you want to be clean, let the word speak to you. Every time something is going on, uh, uh, Elder Angela and, and Elder Angela, Amen. Every time something is going on to get off, to get it off you, to clean, you got to speak the word on you. You cannot speak yourself. Can I get a witness? How many people know? I, I tell people all the time. This is my, this is uh, my opinion. This is my opinion. Amen. Most of the time people don't say it's their opinion, but they're going to give it anyway. Amen. And in their opinion, Sister Ramona, ain't got no word in it. But they're expecting you to receive it. Can, can I get a witness, amen? There's a what? Great expectation, my sister, that you're going to receive my words because I know my word 
has impact. Yeah, what impacts your life don't impact somebody else's life. And, and if you don't believe me, keep trying to tell your kids about your experience and they don't know what you're talking about. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm trying to keep you away from what I've been through. They ain't going through it. You have already been through it. Well, I'm just trying to keep you away from it. If you just knew what would happen, tell me, you just, nah, 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 I can just hear it all the time. If you just knew, faith, 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 stop, stop, faith, amen. <laughs> Jay, stop, 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 Jay, stop, amen. Go ahead, hey, just so smooth, like, hey, uh, amen. But how, Pastor? It, it, it's not the words which have spoken unto you. What words? What do you live by? The words that have been what? Spoken unto you. Now let me help y'all with something. Well, Pastor, haven't nobody spoken no words to me? Well, why are you reading the Bible? It speaks to you. That's right. Why don't you just read the Bible? Those are spoken words. No, but I, I need a preacher to speak to me. Amen? It's good to have preachers speaking to you. But if you ain't open up the word of God, That's right. that preacher could be taking you down the wrong road. That's right. I'm not coming against preachers now. I'm just telling you the truth. Brother Kenneth, it's your assignment. Brother Stu, it's your assignment. What's your name, sir? God. Yeah. Okay, don't add all that other stuff in here. That's <laughs> yeah. God is your word. Gave us your word. Wait a minute, wait a minute, but Pastor, I thought it was his word. It's his word that is speaking into your life. But it cannot speak into your life until you get his word. Now it's a spoken word. Every time you read the Bible, God is speaking. Every time. Every time you open up the Bible, don't matter where you go, God is speaking. Because this is an inspirational word from God that was manifest through man. And in part for a reason. Because he says, my word should not fall on what? Void and ground. Every time you open it, I'm speaking. And that's why when I open up the Bible, I don't open up the Bible just in confusion. Can I get a witness? I open up the Bible for nothing. Mm. Why? For nothing. Why? Because I need him to speak into my life. It's a spoken word. And so when we see this, uh, it, it says, Now ye are clean through the word which have spoken unto you. But nobody's spoken to me. Well, why are you not reading the Bible? The Bible speaks to you when, can, can, I, can I get a witness just for a second? Don't you know when people walk past you and won't speak? If you just keep your little Bible in your pocket, just open it up and start talking to you. It'll talk to you like it's never talked to you before. We want so much attention from other people, we forget about what the Word says. To God be the glory for all things. So now I'm closing John 15, and I'm opening up Psalms 23. Very familiar text. Why? Because I need to know, I need a clean body to be able to function under the fullness of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in Psalms 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Let me help you out with something, amen. All of us have a shepherd that is assigned to us. Can I get a witness, amen? We all know that Jesus Christ is the good, the great, and the chief shepherd. But God assigns angels to the churches. You go into Revelation, it talks about the seven angels of the churches. The angels that they're talking about the churches are the preachers. The pastors that are assigned to get under the shepherd. That's why they're called what? Under shepherds. To get under the shepherd of the chief, the great, and the good shepherd and preach the word of God. Amen? I'm not here to tell you to do anything but I am telling you to get obedient to what the word says. Can I get a witness, amen? amen. And to get obedience to what the word says, it requires you to get under the shepherd 
because the shepherd is a sheep also. Sheep be sheep, sheep be that sheep. Can I get a witness? I'm not just the under shepherd of always house of prayer. I am the lead sheep. Sheep understand sheep. I, I can't talk. If I'm a wolf, I can't talk to you. Oh, yeah. Uh oh, they missed, they missed that one. No matter how I dress, I can sit there and try to act like I got a bad, but sooner or later, it's, it's going to come out another way. Oof. <laughs> I was forget about what I was supposed to be. Oh, come on. And we got too many actors in church. Come on. Amen. They're acting that they're all right, acting everything's okay, acting everything is fine. No, amen. I, I'm sorry, we, I can't give you a global goal. What's that, what's that award called? Global? Global. Uh, global award or Oscar, amen. I can't give you that. Because acting is deception. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. Acting is deception. Amen. No one's going to ever be able to. To, to understand who you are. But you must yourself at least understand who you are. Amen. And stand on who you are Amen. in Christ Jesus. And you won't have to worry about nothing else. You stand on who you are in Christ Jesus. And you won't have to worry about nothing else. Amen. Amen? Because guess what? They can do whatever they want to. But God says, I got something I need to tell you. He, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? Wow. Want. Why? Because I understand by him being my shepherd, it'll be called, he's my provider, mm -hmm. he's my help, yeah. he's my strength, he's my salvation, mm -hmm. he's my restore, mm -hmm. he's my comfort. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about wanting anything because all I need is in him. Mm -hmm. I just need to learn to trust him. Put your trust in the Lord and lean not to your what? Own understanding. Because God shall supply all your needs. Amen? And then it goes on and it says, He's making me to lie down in green pasture. I need to tell. Saints, raise your hand for a second. Everybody just raise your hand. God ain't going to make you live a dead life. Psalms 23 is letting us know. He says, no, no, green pastures. Amen. God is not going not to feed you some dead hay. <laughs> expecting you to live with something dead when he's a living God. Amen. He says, no. He said, I make it to lie down in what? Green pastures. That means living. That means life. That means growing. That means available. And when you lay down in it, amen, you're laying down in me and not them. Not them. I'm a living God. Can I get a witness, amen? amen. And, then, and then he goes on, he, he said, and then he leaded me beside still water. Now, 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 Pastor, wait a minute. He said he leaded me beside, I'm almost getting ready to get there, amen. He led me beside what? Still water, amen. Ain't it amazing when I look at this? It's still. But yet it's still moving. It's still. But yet it's still moving. You ever, you ever looked at a lake? Or you ever looked at something and you walk in it and it looks still? But as soon as you walk in it, you can feel up under? Y'all can I get a witness, amen? Amen. amen. God is living water. It looks still, but it's still moving. Can, can I get a witness, amen? amen? See, it looks still, but see, as soon as you touch it, it lets you know it's got life. Are y'all hear what I'm saying, amen? See, it's still, but as soon as you touch it, it lets you know there's, there's life in it. Uh, are y'all see what I'm saying? So when I see the water is still, I'm so happy because God gave me water. How many of us know how many days you think you can go on just water? Guess what? 40 days and 40 nights. And put up my Burger King. The devil is alive. Put up my McDonald's. Put up my chicken. My biscuit and molasses. My corn 
Oakland and Collard Green? For the days, Pastor? If his words say it, it can be done. Can I get a witness, amen? Amen. And if his word says it, it can be done. And so when we look at this, it says, he says, he, he made me beside a still water. Amen. No, no, no. Here, here's what I want. He restores my soul. Ooh. Why do he say he restores my soul? Why? Because your soul loves to act up. Your flesh loves to get out of control. And he's a God of restoration. Yes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. He's a God of what? Restoration. He's there to restore you. He's there to put you back together. He's there to help you and to keep you. Amen. Amen. He restores my soul. When now my soul gets out of place, God is available to put it in place. So he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Tell your neighbor, see, now I, I, got, I, I got a reason to go to the doctor now. I, I got a reason to go to the doctor now. See, some of y'all, see, some of y'all, y'all are scared of the doctors. Amen? But we have to learn, we live to die to live. Can I get a witness, amen? amen. And what the devil wants is a gateway to your fear. Can I get a witness, amen? Amen. amen. I'm, 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 I'm getting some of y'all out of the hospital beds early now. Y'all don't want to talk to me, amen? You don't have to stay in the hospital weeks and stuff like that. No, you go in there and you already say I'm healed. You already say I'm blessed. You already say I'm highly favored, amen? And this too shall come to pass, amen? And then all of a sudden while you're in there, amen, even when the doctor sends you home, saying we still need to do this, you still keep saying I'm healed, I'm highly favored, I'm walking in the things of the Lord, amen? Because God is able to do all things. He's able. Get ready to close. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thou rod and that staff to comfort me. Amen. Can I tell y'all something? Rod and staff is there for correction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you can't receive no correction, then you got to check your walk. You got to check your walk. Correction is going to always come. It's going to come because love is there. When we're following God, it's all with love. It's all unto Him. Amen. And it Amen. helps us to understand this. Now He says, the company. And then He says, watch this now. Five. Somebody read five for me. 23. Psalms 23. Five. Thou prepared the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Okay, stop right there. Here we go now. Here we go. God is telling us everything. And then He says, go ahead. He says, I'm going to what? I'm going to prepare a table. For you. Now he said, I'm going to prepare what? A table for you. Y'all get this? He says, I'm going to prepare what? Say it again. He says, what now? I prepare, what's it? That I prepare a table before me in the presence of what? So what God has said, I don't want you on this side. I want you to get on the right side. I want you to get behind the table. Get this for me, y'all. Oh, I don't want to knock this over and get in trouble with the flower. Thank you, sir. So he says, now watch this now. He says, Elder, Elder Tracy says, I will prepare a table. Watch this, watch this. Now, now Sister Adam, these are the key part. He says he's going to do it when? In the presence of your work. So God says, I'm, I want you to know, I don't need to prepare a table until I know you're going to trust me. <coughs> See, I need to know that you're going to trust me. That I'm gonna, see, because when it gets, I need to know that I'm going to prepare this table because right now you want to trust me. So I'm going to prepare a table in the what? Presence of your enemy. In the, I'm going to prepare a table in the, in the midst of your storm. I'm going to prepare a table in the, the midst of your heartache, in the, the midst of your pain. I'm going to prepare a table in the midst of it. 
He says, I'm going to prepare a table. Come on, somebody tell me the next one. So he's going to prepare the table. Now watch this, uh, 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 family. He, he, said, he says, I want to make sure that you get on the what? The right side. So he says, I'm not going to prepare a table and leave you over there so that you can see what you got access to. No, I'm going to prepare a table so that they can see what you got access to. See, you're thinking that the table is for you. God already understands you are with him. That's why he's putting you behind the table. Oh, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So he said, I'm going to prepare a table. Watch this. And, uh, and the breath, the presence of it, he can prepare a table for you anytime. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Why? Because I'm under his grace. And I'm sitting, amen, and, I, and I'm eating from the fruit of the... Oh, yeah, my God, amen. But he said, but I need to show you what I can do around your enemies. Amen? So I'm going to prepare. I'm going to prepare a table in the presence of what's going on with you. Amen? Because it's not for you to see what I can do. It's for them to see it. Oh, yeah. Um. Oh, oh, yeah. Hear what I'm saying? Amen? Oh, oh, yeah. See, see, we always want God to protect us. When God is already said, wait a minute, you don't confess I'm going to protect you. What you worried about? We always want God to provide for us, and we say, God is our provider. What you worried about? Amen. I need to be able to reach out to others. Oh, yeah. See there? Y'all got to look at this scripture a little bit different. See, because you may think God was just only doing it for you. No, God understands who you are, but it's the situation he needs to deal with. Uh, Y'all see what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm getting the closing. This is the last scripture. Amen? And then he says what? What's the next thing he says? I what? Watch this. Watch this. Did y'all hear what he said? This is what most saints mess up. Amen. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He, he said, he, he said, I prepare a table. Amen. And then God is saying, well, but the next thing they got to see is my anointing. Hey, that's it. Y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. Amen. Because he said the next thing they got to see is the anointing. See, so you don't worry about trying to show them, aha, uh -huh, look, look, I got everything. No, God said this is not for you. You are now my demonstration to them. Come on. Come on. You are now what? You now are my demonstration to the enemy. I need the enemy to see what you're walking under. And he said, now I prepare a table before my enemy. And then he said, I anoint my head. Because I got to get under the anointing. I got to let them see what is going on. I anoint my head with oil. And here it is. Here it is. We, we're, trying to, we're trying to prove what God is doing for us. No, God is trying to show them what he's doing. He's trying to get your enemy to see. But you are so caught up on proving to the enemy what you got. The Lord is on my side. Look what I got. God is saying, no, no, no. That's not the point of what I'm talking about right now. The point of what I'm talking about right now is I prepared this table. I, I anoint my head. Why do I anoint my head? Because at the table, I need to surrender and get under what God is doing so that the anointing can flow. Why? Why? He says, I, I, need to, I need to anoint because we know when the anointing is there, the presence of the Lord. It ain't just a table. Y'all better come on and help me. Amen. He, he said, I anoint my head with oil. It's the anointing. It's the spirit that God is trying to get us to see and to know that he's able. And then he says, what's the next thing? No, no, no. Now watch this. Watch this. Now, now you're at the table. You got things going on. You are empty until you get to the table. Y'all are hearing me. Then he says, when you get to the table, you anoint yourself. Then you'll come. Your cup then runneth over. But it doesn't run over just because you think it can run over. 
Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying, saints? This is some good teaching. Yes. Amen. Yes. Some good teaching. As a matter of fact, I'm not ready to give myself an offering. Amen. I'm not ready. No, no, but watch this. Elder Carl, we've been talking about the table for ourselves. Carter says, I'm not doing that. I need for them to see what I'm doing for you. I can't help them with you telling them what I'm doing, but I can help them with them seeing what I'm doing. That's right. Amen. So I'm going to prepare this table. Amen. And, and, and I'm going to anoint myself to get under the spirit. Why? Because I need the spirit for my cup to run it over. Well, Pastor, my cup ran it over. So, so what happens? I give it, I give a little of my cup to somebody else. Yes. Uh -huh. And it says, well, Amen. that's not, that was just for one. He says, well, what about the other? Mm -hmm. See, I'm going to show you something. He says, and that cup ran it over. Amen. And he says, what about the other? And that cup ran it over. And he says, But Lord, I'm empty now. What about me? He says, You shouldn't worry about that. You was the vessel. He's already started pouring out the blessing. 
How dare we become selfish in the midst of God using you? To where you're more worried about what God is going to do for you when he's trying to pour through you. Can I get a witness? Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Come on. Deacon and Elvis, will y'all please move this from me? Saints, give me something very soft. It's time to get clean. And get under the influence of God. Your cup is running over. You do have overflow. You can't overcome. But don't get caught. Believing that it cannot happen. Today is your moment. Today is where God cleanses you. God's clean you. And he makes his table available to you to show your enemies that you're living on the abundant side. That God has called you for all the things that he's done and all the things that he will do. Today is your day. This is where you get cleaned up. I don't care if you're an elder, you're a deacon, you're an evangelist, you're a minister, you're a reverend, you're a doctor, who you are. If there's something going on in your life and you know it is time for you to get it out. It can be anger, it can be depression, suppression, whatever. Backbiting, gossip, whatever that it may be. It's time to get clean. So God can create your new heart.